You are so ugly. Yo, what do you think about the politically charged climate over in Wall Street? No one? Okay, bro. All right, I got you. I got you. Got you. Got you. I'm just trying to keep the integrity of journalism alive. Tough job. We're here at Chasers. We're going to be playing some 2-5. Hopefully, we can run as hot as the climate outside right now. It is hot as balls. Side note, hopefully pelicans are not allowed in the card room because if I had to face one of them heads up for like a thousand dollars, I might pee my pants a little bit. Seagulls are like zombies in bird form. Their expression is brainless yet utterly terrifying. My god, put me in a room with five of these things, I'd shit myself. We head inside and get called for the 2-5 game, and we buy in for a thousand dollars. We've been playing pretty bad recently, so the goal today is to not do that. This is one of those sessions where I was like Steph Curry from the three-point line taking a heat check from 40 feet away. <laughs> it got ridiculous. You guys are in for a treat. Without further ado, let's get started. Within five minutes, I feel like Frank Sinatra in his prime because we pick up the ladies in early position. I raise it up to $15 and no less than four call. Glad we could thin the field. Going basically heads up to a flop, which comes seven, six, three, two clubs. This flop doesn't connect with my opening range much, but it smashes the opponent's calling range. For that reason, I decide to check. The low jack fires $35 and the small blind calls. We're losing to 4-5, the opponents have sets of 3s, 6s, and 7s in their range, and even against an ace-high flush draw, we're not all that much of a favorite. Our main goal should be to keep this pot relatively small, manageable, and just call. But I decide to check raise to $175. And both players call. Okay, that can't be good. The turn is the 3 of diamonds. The small blind checks once again. When two people call on the flop, I'm just gonna check for pot control. The low jack also checks. We're still going three ways to a river, which comes the queen of hearts. We river a freaking boat. No, I'm kidding. It's the jack of hearts, which is almost the queen. And it'd be really dope if we had jacks, but we don't. Small blind checks a third time. And I think this spot, I should just be checking a lot because if there are any draws, they're just gonna fold out, but we could still very easily be behind a lot of holdings. So I like a check here. Present me disagrees. I bet $300 and immediately get punished. The low jack jams $912. Another player at the table gave us this extra perspective to watch me get my soul owned in real time. Appreciate the footage. If poker doesn't work out, you can certainly be a cameraman for CNN or something of the sort. Small blind folds, action's back on us. The only hand we beat here is a bluff. Hands like 8-7, 8-6 that block sets on the flop, but I think that's really unrealistic given how the action has played out. All I really put him on here is sets of 7s or 6s. I don't think 4-5 jams when the board pairs, and ace-3 of spades probably just calls. I decide to limit the damage, fold this hand, and find a better spot. The low jack shows pocket sevens for top set turned boat. I really dislike how I played this hand. I should check call the flop and check evaluate the river. We don't even have time to wipe our tears as the very next shuffle we pick up pocket fives under the gun. I open a $15 and immediately get three bet by the guy who owned our soul. So is this just the day where you own my soul? It might be, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's unfortunate. You know they say what goes around comes around, right? We go heads up to a flop, which comes check 5-3. We flop a set 30 seconds after this guy flopped one on us. There are multiple draws available on this board, so when that's the case, I think a check raise is the best line I check it over to him, and he bets $35. That amount is not going to fly in our house. I raise it up to $150. Under the gun, one thinks about it for a little bit, and eventually makes the call. We're still going heads up to a turn, which comes deja vu. It's the three of clubs, making us a boat. Who would have thought being a captain of a ship is way more fun than getting hit by one? We have around $400 behind, which is about a pot size bet. With my action on the flop, I could very well have ace x of spades that has a lot of equity and just wants to get all the money in on the flop. I think that's a mistake, and if I had the nut flush draw, I'd probably just call, but he doesn't know that. 
And additionally, if my opponent is on a flush draw himself, I'd rather let him get there. For those two reasons, I slow down and check. Under the Gun 1 thinks for a little bit, then announces two words that I love to hear. John's all in and a call. Unfortunately, his queens are no good, but fortunately, fives are. We scoop a massive double up after losing a large pot right off rip, mainly because I played it horribly. We must have prayed hard enough because the poker gods bail us out within 30 seconds. Next interesting spot. We have 10-9 of hearts in the cutoff. I open it up to $15 and immediately get 3-bet by the same opponent. This is just going to be a battle of you and me all day. This is great. This guy is my age. Seems it's battle of the teens here at Chasers, where the average age is 96. The two youngest people in the room go heads up to a flop, which comes 6-5 deuce rainbow. I check it over to him, and he c-bets $35. I think a fold is fine, but... It's very possible he has two overcards that didn't connect, which means a check raise might actually be the best possible outcome here. It folds out all of his ace highs, and even puts middling pairs, like sevens, eights, in a tough situation. However, as played, I decided to call with intentions of leading the turn and trying to steal it on later streets, but that plan changes when the turn is the nine of clubs. Since I don't think this guy has anything, I'm just going to check, hope he continues to fire with two overcards, and we can just call him down. The button seems to be on board with that plan, as he fires once again for $80. Nothing for me to do here, except make the call, and we go off to a river, which is a great card. It's another five, pairing the board. I check it once more, but the button doesn't slow down. He bets $210. Okay, now I'm a little bit concerned that he might have 10s plus. That's just going for max value. Raise makes no sense. Folding also seems like a sin. And my brother in Christ, that leaves us one option. If he has an overpair, so be it. He wins the max. I stick in the call and we hear good news. He shows queen 10 of diamonds for absolute air. We can beat that. So we take down a nice sizable pot. Shortly after this hand, we get moved to the main game, and my goodness, are we just getting started. Here the straddle is on, and we look down at ace-jack, offsuit, and the hijack. I open to $30, and only the straddler defends. Flop comes queen-10-3 rainbow. Straddler checks it over to me. I bet $25, and he calls. The turn is a nine of spades. The straddler checks it over to me once more. This card favors my opponent's range, plus now we have an open-ended straight draw. When we're in position, on a drawing hand, I'd rather realize our equity rather than betting, facing a raise, than having to fold. For those reasons, I decide to check it back, and just like Russell Westbrook on the Lakers, this river is no help. The straddler now leads out for $100. I have a hunch that ace high is probably not good here, so we have an easy fold. I'm happy with how I play this one. Nothing we can do except move on to the next hand. We're in the hijack once again, and this time we pick up pocket jacks. The low jack raises to $35, and I decide to put in the three bet to $100. Everyone else folds, but the low jack makes the call, and we're going heads up to a flop, which comes not great for pocket jacks. It's king, queen, nine, two diamonds in a heart. Expectedly, the low jack checks to me, and this board actually favors my 3-betting range. I'm gonna have all the sets here. I could have kings, queens, and I'd even mix in 3-betting nines. Plus, I have two jacks, which double blocks jack 10. I could certainly have that as well. Basically, what I'm saying is I have a lot of potential holdings that are absolutely nutted. For that reason, I fire out $55, and the low jack makes the call. The turn is the Ace of Diamonds. The low jack checks once more with around $250 behind. Well, this is another card that makes our hand even better in theory. Plus, we have the Jack of Diamonds. And I didn't see about the flop to become a big massive pussy on the turn. I jam all in for his remaining stack, and the low jack doesn't think too long before folding Ace Queen offsuit face up. We get this one through. That might be at the top of his range. Thank you, Poker Gods. 
When you're a lonely male with access to the internet in your free time, what's an activity that you normally find yourself doing? Yeah, we pick up Jack King off in the straddle. Button raises to $30, and I think this is a candidate to 3-bet or call. In this case, I don't want to play a bigger pot out of position, so I decide to call. Flop comes Jack 7-5. I check, and the button bets $20. I don't think a raise makes much sense on this board. I'm obviously never folding, which leaves just one option. I stick in the call, and we go to a turn which comes to 3 of hearts. If I check, I think the button checks back a lot of middling pairs here. I don't want this to check through. I decide to lead now for $60. Button doesn't think too long before making the call. River is a great card. It's the five of diamonds, pairing the board. We improve to two pair, and when I have a good hand, I want a bet set hand. I hope the logic checks out. I fire $150. And the button doesn't think too long before making the call, and we're good. Bam. Nice. Taking down another pot. Perfect. When you're a man and is lonesome, right? Sometimes you revisit the same subject. This time, we're in the low jack, but we have Jack King off. I open to $30, and three players make the call. The flop is absolute gin. Queen, 10, 9, 2 spades. Oh my word, we flop the nuts. I should certainly size up here with so many draws available on this board. I make it 60, the hijack calls, and then the small blind check raises to $150 with around 500 behind. This is a dream. I have two options. Call, hope the player behind me makes the call as well, blow up the pot, see a clean turn, then jam there, or jam on the flop while we're for sure ahead and hope to get called by any drawing hands or top pair, good kicker, two pair, stuff like that. Since I don't have a spade in my hand, I think the best play of action is to jam right here, right now, get it all in while we're ahead. However, I flat call, hoping that the hijack calls behind, but the hijack folds. Shit. Now we're going heads up to a turn, which pairs the board it's another 10. The small blind checks it over to me with around 500 behind. There have already been two instances today where the turn pairs, and in both cases, the player had a boat. So, what if he has a boat here? Then we're screwed. I decide to check it back and evaluate a river. If this situation were not a dumpster fire, it's a catastrophic explosion because the river is another queen. Double pairing the board. Oh my god, how did we screw this up? The small blind now leads for a puny bet of $100. I just call, and the small blind shows queen five offsuit for a rivered boat. Yikes. I have to take a five minute break because I feel like the dumbest person on the planet right now. Okay, it's been 15 minutes since our blunder. I'm fine, we're good. Everything's fine, we're fine. I'm like that dog sitting drinking coffee at the table while everything else is on fire. That's how I feel, but we're fine. I spoke to the guy who was involved in the hand and he said if I jammed flop, he was calling. So the bright side of that situation in this particular instance, not to be result oriented, obviously I want to get the money in, but I would have lost 500 something dollars. So the takeaway is we actually saved money. I still, I can't believe it. Whatever. Let's move on, dude. We pick up pocket tens on the button. I raised up to $30 and immediately get three bet by the small blind to $100. The big blind then cold calls and actions back on us. This development is almost as awkward as my middle school relationship, but not quite. So we make the call. One thing I would like to note is the big blind's range here is so strong. He should have no flat calls here. It should be a four bet or fold. In real time, I thought the big blind had like king queen suited, ace queen suited, ace king suited, maybe nines if we're being ambitious. He could still have jacks queens, but I'm closing the action. I'm getting a price to see a flop. If we hit a 10, then I think we're going to get a lot of money, especially if we're up against jacks plus. Going three ways to a flop, which, dude, it comes 10, 10, 9, two hearts and a spade. 
We screwed up every situation thus far, and the poker god said, Corey, okay, we're going to give you the stone cold nuts in the best position possible. You cannot f this up if you try. I nod my head. Yes, poker gods, okay, understood. Small blind checks. Big blind fires for $180. We get led into when we flop the stone cold cojones. The big blind has around $1,300 behind. Okay, don't screw this up. There is one plausible option. That is to call. So that's what we do. The small blind folds and we go heads up to a turn, which comes the seven of clubs. Big blind does not slow down. He bets $500. If we jam here... No, Corey, stop it. Stop it. You have the nuts. For the love of God, just call. Please just call. Please. Oh my God, he's reaching for more chips. Oh no. I'm in position with the stone cold nuts and I jam all in and the big blind snap folds. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. I'm not that stupid. I elect to call, and the river comes the ace of spades. Big blind finally slows down and checks. I, again, only have one option. The poker gods are making it very, very simple because our brain can't comprehend options today. Glad it's straightforward. All in jam. The big blind does not snap fold. Wow, okay. The big blind actually tanks for 40 seconds before electing on a fold. I am. I am. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew you had Quad tens with an ace. We have to hold for just under 13 minutes. This is going to be a sweat. The hilarious thing about this hand is the big blind said if I jammed the turn, he actually would have called because he had a straight flush draw. Our stack has ballooned over $2,500 and we have a high hand promo for a thousand. Let's hold and bring home the cash, baby. Within five minutes after flopping quad tens, two tens appeared on another flop. Then shortly after, there was a three way all in with the biggest stacks at the table on a jack 10 three flop and the winner had pocket tens. She took down a massive $4,000 pot. Tens are on fire. After what felt like four months, seven days, and six hours, our high hand promo held, and we cashed an additional $1,000 going straight to the bank. We played until the end of the night, ran it up an additional four or $500, and finally cashed out for one of our biggest wins ever. Wow, okay, I was in the game for $1,000, out for 2830 and I played like garbage! I played like garbage! This is like, I feel like I just robbed the casino. I will take it though. I feel like I played the worst I have all year. I just ran really hot. Profit of $2,730 in the day. Thank you so much for watching. I guess just live a luck box. This just shows it's better to be lucky than good at poker.